All right, now polyprotic acids are the ones that have multiple H's that they can give off, have these curves that have basically two titration curves put together. So you have one for the first H and one for the second H. So basically you have two of everything. You have two uh, equivalence points, two half equivalence points, because you have two KAs, which means you also have two PKAs, okay? So, all right, and here we have an acid that has uh, three hydrogens to give away, so now it's like three titration curves together. The yellow ones are going to be your half equivalents, and the blue dots represent your equivalence points, and you see there's a first, a second, and a third equivalence point for every H that comes off of that acid. Now, if you wanted to talk about a base that could accept more than one hydrogen ion, such as Na2CO3, so when you're looking at that, you're basically talking about the CO3 2 minus, okay, so he can accept two hydrogen ions. And you see here, you have a first equivalence and then a second equivalence because you basically have two titration curves together just in the opposite manner. Okay, so understand that titration curves can tell you a lot about what you're looking for. Um, make sure you pay attention to your axes to see if you're looking at moles or if you're looking at um, a lot of times it's volume of titrant added. Okay, and as long as you pay attention to these things, you should be able to notice where you have a half equivalence point, which is the flattest part of the curve, and a full uh, equivalence point, which is going to be the steepest part of the curve. Okay, and depending on how many you have, you should be able to tell how many either hydrogen ions are being accepted or removed um, during that process. Okay, so when we are talking about um, polyprotic acids or bases and we're provided with the titration curve, we can use that titration curve to help us figure out um, how many hydrogens um, the acid can donate or the base can accept. Okay, so in this example, we are definitely given a polyprotic acid because the pH starts very low. And then notice that it shoots up suddenly at point B. And it kind of levels back out. And then it shoots back up again at point D. Anytime you have a sudden jump in pH like that, it shoots straight up, that is an equivalence point. So you can count the number of equivalence points, and that will tell you how many protons the acid has. So in this case, in this example, we have a proton coming off there and a proton coming off there. So that means there's two hydrogens on this acid. So a generic formula for this could be like H2A. All right. Um, you also need to be able to read the information on a polyprotic titration curve. Um, in order to determine more info about your acid or base. Okay, so in this case, again, um, we're starting really low, so we've definitely got us an acid here. So we have a polyprotic acid, and then also notice that it's being um, titrated with a base. Notice that it shoots up suddenly in two spots, so there's definitely, this is a diprotic, so definitely like an H2A situation like the previous one. Okay, so the first thing that um, we're asked to do is to identify the pH and the volume for both our first and second equivalence points. So I'm just going to make us a little chart right down here, first and second. So this is going to be our first and uh, second equivalence points. First thing we want to look at is pH. Okay, so first equivalence point is right here, and it looks like it is occurring at a pH of around 5. Okay, and then here is the second one, and this one looks like it's occurring at a pH of around 10. All right, now the volume of our equivalence is just reading the graph. So, um... Here on this first one, you see that that's a 10 mil 
one, okay, that's volume, and then the second one is at 20 mils, okay. All right, now it wants us to determine the pKa and, um, well, the pKa1 and pKa2, so to determine the pKa's for the acids. Okay, so remember that pH is equal to pKa at half equivalence. So our first equivalence was 10, so half would be 5. So at 5 um, milliliters of NaOH, it looks like our pKa is around 2.5. Okay, and then our second one was at 20. Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier, okay, because you sort of have to think of these as um, separate things, okay? So I'm going to draw a line right there. So you're basically starting over um, in terms of looking at the curve after the uh, first equivalence point. So all this right here is representative of the second um, hydrogen coming off. So this is what we're going to analyze for that. So just understand that it really is a 10 milliliter difference from 20 um, to 10 or 10 to 20. So half equivalence is not going to be 10. Half equivalence is going to be half of that difference, okay? So the difference is 10, so half of that's 5. So we really should be looking at 15 mils, okay? So at 15 mils, um, looks like our pKa is around, I don't know, 7.2, something like that, okay? All right, so... Last question wants to know um, if we're at a volume of 18 milliliters, um, what the major species is going to be. Okay, so 18 mils, okay, we're talking like right here, okay. So at this equivalence point, the first hydrogen is completely gone. So over here, you've got H2A. When you get to here, you've got HA minus converting into A2 minus. Now, notice that 18 mils is slightly past equivalence, um, I mean half equivalence, and so if you're slightly at half equivalence, your um, acid is equal to your conjugate base. So right here on this arrow at our 15 mils, we had equal concentrations of these two species. We are a little past half equivalence. So what that tells us is that we have a little bit more of the conjugate base than the acid. So A2 minus is the dominant species there. Okay. Um, Biochemistry is com um, completely fair game on the AP exam. Um, so just to give you a little exposure, here is a um, structure for the amino acid um, arginine. And it has three different hydrogens that can be removed. Um, so they all are assigned a pKa value. The um, first proton, proton A, is assigned a pKa value um, of, well, I don't know why I can't see that sucker. Um, <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so it looks like a 2.01. And then B has a pKa of 9.04, and then C has a pKa of 12.48. Okay, so at a pH of 4.5, wants us to describe the dominant form of um, arginine. Okay, so what we know is that if we are past the um, pKa of that particular proton, we know that we've at least reached half equivalence, right? So we definitely have at least reached half equivalence um, at a pH of 
because that's definitely past 2.01, right? And being past the pKa of that particular proton is definitely telling you that at least over half um, of the sample has become the conjugate base at that point. So we have definitely removed this particular hydrogen right here, and um, we are on our way towards the next, right? So this is going to be the dominant species at a pH of 4.5. So it's just going to be this exact thing with this hydrogen right here gone. And then there should be, you know, of course, a little negative sign there. Okay, so the second one is at a pH of 10.2. All right, so 10.2 is past the pKa of, um, of the second one, of the uh, proton B, right? So it is past the pKa of that. What that tells us is that, again, we have removed um, at least half of proton B. So we remove one of these, right? So it's going to become positive. Um, well, no, po not positive. It's going to become negative, my bad. Um, so it should be that right there, okay? And that's going to be our dominant form. So now our dominant form is going to be this hydrogen gone and the second hydrogen gone. So only the third hydrogen should remain. All right, and last but not least, um, if we're talking about um, a triprotic acid such as phosphoric acid, we are given the three dissociation equations um, and their pKa values. Says that um, originally our acid solution had a pH of 2.5 and um, KOH, which is a strong base, was added until the acid reached a pH of 8.35. It wants us to tell um, what the dominant species is gonna be at that point. Okay, so again, 8.35 is gonna put us in this range right here, right? So we're past, we're, we're definitely, that's not definitely not the dominant species anymore. And that's not the dominant species anymore because we are, a little past half equivalence. Past half equivalence is telling us that we've got more of the conjugate base. So this right here is going to be our dominant species.